have Scott, Chris, and Eric with us today. There is also Jim up in the corner there. Well, he's in my corner, I guess not. Maybe not for you guys. But anyway, just real quick, um, you will receive a link to view the recording within 24 to 48 hours. That does come directly from me. Um, something else, just make sure you are on the lookout for any information regarding the TWI and Kata Summit coming up in April. Um, I know I have sent emails out regarding this, but there is a big eclipse happening, and apparently the Midwest is a huge viewing point, so hotel rooms are going really fast. So just shoving that in there. Um, Scott, over to you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Skylar. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. And, and thanks for uh, attending this uh, webinar on standardized work, connecting the dots. Uh, I, I'd like to uh, quickly introduce the, the, the two panelists that we've got. Uh, we've got Chris uh, Gector from uh, Tajan Automotive Technologies and, and uh, Eric Thompson from Align Precision. I'd just like to ask uh, Chris and... Uh, to do a, a brief intro on, on their organizations, then we'll get started. Thanks, Scott. Uh, my name's Chris, and I'm with uh, Tajian Automotive Technologies. We are a um, supplier of sheet molded composites to the automotive, marine, and industrial uh, uh, markets. Uh, claim to fame, lightweight Class A panels. You'll see them on uh, um, Corvettes and uh, pickup truck bodies and things like that. Um, mercury outboard engines. Uh, we have 13 plants within the, the North American operations, and uh, we are a practitioner of uh, of TWI. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Uh, I am Eric Thompson. I am with Align Precision. Uh, Align Precision, we have 10 facilities across the U.S. Uh, the facility that I am currently located in is in Philadelphia. Um, we supply aerospace uh, some defense work as well, um, and semiconductor is what our main focus here at the Philadelphia facility is. Um, we have three, four, and five axis CNC milling equipment. We have precision and grinding equipment, um, and we also have some CNC uh, lathe equipment. Um, we do a lot of assembly work, so we have uh, we have a clean room, so we do assembly work inside of our clean room, and then we also have assembly work that we're doing outside of the clean room. Uh, like I was saying, our customer that we're mainly uh, focusing on is a leading manufacturer in the uh, the chip making equipment. So um, we are a large growth curve with uh, with that customer. So uh, hence our uh, our getting into uh, TWI with uh, standardized work, and then also getting us into the JR and JI. So great. All right. Thanks, Eric. And so just to uh, remind everybody, the, the focus of this webinar today, we, we want to, uh, you know, hear from uh, both Chris and Eric, uh, their views and experiences on really this connection between continuous improvement, you know, the lean, traditional lean methodologies and tools and the standardized work processes. You can start to answer some of these questions. Uh, does the application of, of standardized work really form uh, and become the core of workplace excellence. So uh, just to really give a little more background on, on both uh, organizations from a standardized work standpoint, uh, Eric and Align Precision, they, I believe uh, they, they started using standardized work in July of this year. So it's, it's relatively new. And, and Chris Atasian, they've done a, a number of, of deliveries across uh, various plants, uh, also starting early this year. Uh, I think it was in June, so they've done four or five. So, and we've, we've got some experience, uh, you know, applying that so far uh, across these two organizations. So the, the, the first area I, I'd really like to uh, explore is to, to learn how, um, how you've uh, started really to connect these dots between the traditional lean tools and this, this overall overarching standardized work process. So if you could uh, talk about uh, how you've seen those tools, um, you know, what you've seen that they were in place before starting, and, and, and have they, and, and are they starting to blend with the standardized work? Chris, you want to go first? Sure. Well, um, I guess in our, in our journey here, um, our plants had a very strong focus on uh, kind of product and process controls, you know, with the classic work instructions. 
and uh, also a strong focus on equipment controls with parameter sheets and lot fit with our equipment. Um, large presses, large complicated bonding and painting uh, systems. Um, our operations, on the other hand, uh, we relied on a lot of tribal knowledge. Um, so, so we didn't have that operator focus. However, we did have a stable, very experienced workforce. So uh, it seemed to work. Now, over the last few years, uh, between our growth, uh, COVID, uh, you name it, um, our workforce is no longer stable and a lot less experienced. So um, we've, we've found that uh, the standard work um, really benefits that, that final piece, that, that's the, those dots we connected between uh, the, 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 the quality instructions, the, the equipment instructions, and now the formal operator instructions, which really are going to, I think, get, get us that benefit, a tighter focus on, on quality costs and delivery uh, in, our, in our processes. I think for us at Align Precision, um, so so probably typical, you know, 5S implementations. The the building here has been here for 75 years. Um, I've been here for just over a year, but so some of the typical kind of lean imp implementation type tools, uh, I'm sure as all of you would kind of expect to see. Um, I kind of saw here, but for for me and I guess for the rest of us on our on our leadership team here, it was how do we start tying everything all together um, and um, reaching out to, uh, to Scott and to Patrick at the Institute to help us with the, the standardized work was just a way that we saw to help us kind of start tying everything together and also to um, give our people um, just a simple methodology to follow something that was maybe a little bit easier than like a typical you know, uh, a Six Sigma black belt type project, a Demaic project. So um, that was kind of where our need was coming from. We just wanted something a little bit easier and uh, quick and powerful, I guess. So that, that's good, uh, Eric, because that leads me to really one of the, the, the third points on on the series of questions, but I'll come back to the second one. It says, um, the question is, has there been a deeper level of engagement from the shop floor workers in the improvement process? And, and I guess, have you, can you share some examples of that? Yeah, from from um, when we, just our session that we had when Patrick was here to do the, the, the course, just getting the areas organized better to suit the operator. So that was definitely one of the, uh, we, had th we had 15 people go through it. So we had three groups and one of those teams, that was their focus as they started to document the operator and the steps that they were taking to load and unload a machine. Um, it was it was just became glaringly obvious that just travel time, right? Just back and forth between workbenches. So them streamlining the, the, the work area, that, that was a simple, easy one. So, and they got it done in uh, a day to be able to do that. So. That's interesting. Just, just putting that, uh, you know, the process in place and the visuals to, that people recognize, oh my goodness, there's a, you know, there's a lot of waste in this. And, and Chris, how about you? Yeah, it, we found I've, you know some examples I've cited. We uh, it, it takes the chaos out of the processes. Hmm. Um, you know, we have people. What happens when the when variation enters into a into a, a process? Uh, people feel they have to change the site the sequence to to catch up or to, to uh, react. And uh, what what's you know in one particular case, one of the operators found that if I just stick to the process that we've developed, you know, that they we've all developed. Um, It'll get, they'll catch up, you know, because we didn't, we didn't uh, set up his work cycle to be a hundred percent of the work time. Uh, there was, there was time built in to uh, sustain. Whereas if they would just, if they would deviate, that created extra work, and then they would continue to fall behind and, uh, you know, never really catch up uh, through the rest of the day. In the the last uh, point about this first uh, area of, of focus is talking about uh, the, the resources that have been classically using lean and, and continuous improvement. I know, Chris, you're, you're in an OPEX group or a, a lean group. So you've got, you've got experts that, that have been applying this for, for a period of time. And the question is, have those resources that were, I guess we'd say classically trained and lean and continuous improvement methods, how have they seen this, this overarching standardized work process 
uh, is it is it help bring some of these other these other tools into focus in, in applying uh, a little bit better, perhaps? I uh, well, personally, I think it's it's all it's all one and the same. Uh, you know, standard work is a foundational element of of applying the lean tools. Um, I, I think for other other departments um, that aren't as fully versed in lean. I think it's uh, it helps them uh, kind of see the end results and uh, to help them uh, get to that uh, kind of the end, the means to the end, um, where they we can pull all of our information together, all of the tools together, and um, and, and have a a visual solution that you know simple visual solution that works uh, for our operations folks. I think for us, the what the standardized work course did for the whole facility, we, we definitely have our operational excellence team. I have um, some black belts. Um, we also did, you know, some Kaizen leader training, but the mm -hmm. standard work course gave the rest of the organization the opportunity to start to use, use data, use visuals um, in their everyday processes, right? It didn't have to be uh, anything super critical or ne necessarily super complex, um, like I had just mentioned before, just just how the operator was moving around in the space um, to make a difference, uh, to be able to reduce cycle time, right? Because it's load and unload uh, of the machine, so it got us one more part, a shift, which, uh, because of our growth curve, uh, can make a big yeah. impact. So, Yeah, so I, I guess what I'm hearing is that this process, not beyond just the you know the CI resources, it, it helped everybody in, in the organization get focused on um, improvement and improving cycle time. For for our class, we had a mix. I mean, we had managers, we had engineers, and we and we had operators. So mm -hmm. I think that was the first time for some of the operators that they had the opportunity to get involved on a on a called a continuous improvement type event. So yeah. Very good. All right. So the the, the second area that, that I'd, I'd like to uh, explore a little bit more is, is uh, really the uh, the integration of uh, the classic TWI training with industry programs in the overall standardized work process. And so you you both had some some baseline uh, you know work with TWI prior to uh, doing the standardized work training. And can you talk to us about how? Uh, how you've seen TWI uh, perhaps as a, a critical element or a foundation for uh, the proper application of standardized work. Sure, from from our perspective too. So definitely stabilizing, right? That was a big thing that Patrick was teaching and preaching to us, right? You have to be able to stabilize your processes before you, you're you're going and trying to uh, to standardize it. So that's where J JI and JR was uh, and is super critical, just to kind of get us in there to start understanding processes and working with the operators um, before we really try to go improve uh, and make better. Um, um, so from my perspective, that that was a that was a different, I think, most most people and most of my past, it's it's been jumping into, hey, we got to reduce cycle time. So um, let's make things faster and better. Yeah, yeah. From our standpoint, um, JI is our way to train. So that's, uh, we've kind of set that foundation principle uh, within the organization. And then what we've, after going through the standard work and kind of putting together our standard work integration plan with our plants, um, I think one of our aha moments was that um, you can develop standard work and the documents, but until you have the training linked to it, that's how you get standardized work. Um, so that's kind of what, that's what we're preaching to our uh, our plants. And as, as we train and roll out uh, this, we develop the standard work and it really, it links seamlessly directly into creating jibs, job instruction breakdowns. So that, um, you know, that tight link um, kind of forces the issue that you have to have JI to train to the to the standard work. Yeah, excellent. I was the other just tools, add, 
Go ahead. One little one little piece too. So part of why uh, we chose TWI, JI, and standardized work. So we, we have a, a workforce that is very experienced, but that workforce is also looking to retire within the, the next few years. So the, just a huge need to onboard people. And then, so we're trying to, how we are capturing that knowledge from that experienced workforce is through standardized work and through our jibs to then be able to train that uh, that next generation. Um, so through developing our people, that's that's the only way that we get to where uh, we need to be, so. Excellent. And, and one of the, I, I guess I'm asking the same question a different way, but um, could you foresee problems where um, an organization might try uh, getting started with, with standard work or standardized work if they don't have a good foundation of TWI in place? Uh, do you think it's possible? What what uh, shortcomings might they run into? That, uh, for us, definitely. So we have tons of procedures, right? Our customer has very detailed procedures for how their assemblies go together. Um, they're just confusing. So uh, a way to simplify and just make it easy uh, is with standardized work and uh, and with our jibs. So yeah, very good. I know we just had a, a question come in from uh, from the audience. Uh, they, the, the request was, could we expand a little bit on um, JI and JR? And you know, I'll, I'll let you guys uh, uh, talk about that just a little bit deeper, if you could. Sure. Um, well, JR, I think you know, job relations is kind of the basics of uh, kind of employee relations and uh, how you how you manage and, and treat people. Um, so I think that's kind of just a foundational organizational element um, that uh, is, is is benefits can benefit the company uh, from a JI standpoint. Again, I think there's a direct link. Or we we found a direct link between the the standard work and operator sequence to training a person to that sequence using the job instruction breakdowns, and so that's where. Uh, that's where we've integrated job instruction, uh, the job instruction methodology in our plants um, to the standard work, because um, that gives us the basics to train. That's that's the roadmap. For us too, we, we started at, at JI. We definitely struggled out of the gate. Um, and what we kind of found, it, it was definitely the employee or that the human connection piece is uh what was what was difficult for us and um so so our next step after that then was um uh, jr and that if uh, it helped us call it supercharge if you want to call it that our our job instruction and and helped us reinforce um being able to to go out there and talk to people to be able talking to people is difficult so um particularly for manufacturing folks, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> likes to, they just want to keep their heads down and they're going to make their things yeah, and go yeah. home and don't bother me. So yeah. um, that can be tricky sometimes. Yeah, there, there's there's quite a few questions that are that continue to probe into, uh, into JI and JR. Um, yeah, the one, the one question was, uh, at what point do you recommend bringing in job relations after JR? Um, I don't know if you have quick thoughts on that one. Uh, based on, on your experiences, would you? I, I think the question is, you know, would you one with one after the other, or is there in hindsight, would you do JR first or JI first, or you know something like that? Hindsight for me is definitely JR. I think having a strong leadership group to be able to then go out there and uh, really work with the employees to create the jibs. Uh, we definitely did it the other way around. And yeah. like I said, we did struggle a little bit with, uh, with JI going first. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did ours in parallel. We did JI, JR kind of, uh, yeah. along parallel lines. Um, I, I would say JR first is probably the best. Um, if you had to do one or the other, uh, start with JR, then move to JI. Um, yeah. we've started to bring in JM job methods, um, a little bit. But um, again, we've got enough work to do already. <laughs> yeah, and so, this is, uh, 
you know, and, and I think this is consistent with, with what we hear time and time again with uh, clients that have been doing this a long time. You know, they start with job, job instruction and go to job relations. And, and in many cases, they come back and say, in hindsight, if we had started with job relations to build that that environment, that culture <clears throat> that built on, you know, trust and respect. So when we go to the shop and we start looking at ways to improve or change, we, we've got the buy-in. So I think that's... Uh, you know, one of the underlying themes and, and part of the questioning that we're getting on this. The other one is it's sort of uh, unique is uh, the question was, uh, were checklists used? And if so, what were the pros and cons? And I know that standard to standardized work, it's, you know, part of its form driven, form based, but, uh, you know, can you can you comment on the, on the forms and the tools part of that and pros and cons perhaps? I the training matrix is kind of what the tool that we have utilized and that you get in JI. So that's how we're documenting for which work, uh, which jobs, and then for who and by what date. Um, it, I mean, we're trying to keep it simple for right now. So. Yeah, from a, we haven't really used checklists per se in the, you know, or we, we've used checklists in the, implementation or the development process of the standardized work, but uh, our final outputs have been um, typically a uh, the classic operator standard work instruction form um, and then tied to the JIB and then the, the, op the training timetables that the uh, supervisors then use to, to manage the training um, and implementation. Yeah, yeah awesome. And I think uh, we, we've got uh, less than 10 minutes, so that the last area that I, I'd like to explore is, is really uh, talk about the benefits that you've seen so far, what, what's been realized uh, so far with starting with standardized work. Has there, has there been measurable and sustainable improvement that you've been able to, to really grab a hold of? I would say we're still well, working on it. It's a huge flywheel to get up and, and going. Um, we definitely want to... Uh, have Patrick come back out for another course uh, in 2024. Um, so I'd say we're still working on it. Yeah. Yeah, we're not the best at measuring and sustaining, um, but um, I think one of the biggest impacts we've seen is is um, in our training classes, we've had a mix of, uh, of uh, quality professionals, engineering professionals, and supervisors. And uh, because those are kind of the three areas that need to collaborate in developing uh, the standardized work uh, with the operators, of course, as they're out on the floor um, developing the, the information. I think the biggest impact we've seen is uh, with the supervisors, getting them through the training, they can see where the standard, standardized work can make their lives easier from a training, auditing, and problem-solving standpoint. And then once they see that and start experiencing that, uh, they're all in. Um, they just, it's, it's it's so much easier for them to uh, to conduct their work um, that uh, they, they keep wanting more. Um, they've been able to lock in labor savings in a few areas where in the past it would fluctuate. And um, again, because we're not good at measuring sustaining, it really didn't matter. Um, but now we've been able to lock in those labor savings and, um, and then start uh, seeing those benefits. I'll add to, uh, Scott, I think for us as well, um, so we've been trying to reintroduce uh, apprenticeships. Um, and that's also where one of our focuses, so one of our uh, one of our, our floor employees, um, highly tenured employee, lots of experience, went through the JI class, JI class, has excelled in JI, but we're also utilizing him to help us build jibs for some of those basic uh, apprentice entry level type uh, roles on some of the machines. Um, so I'll mention that that's because that's huge for us as well uh, as we try to develop more talent for our CNC equipment. So. Yeah, excellent. You know, and I, I think it's it's fair to to ask about, uh, you know, perhaps some problems or things. Now, in hindsight, you wish you had done a little bit differently along this journey that we can that we can share and provide that insight to to some of the people that are, that are listening if they're considering looking at this process and, and maybe some pitfalls to avoid is there is there anything that that you you know you could share along those lines 
I think for, for me, it's definitely going back to the JR piece of it. Um, so even though we, we put all of our, our leadership team through JI just so that they could understand what it was and, and get that experience. So that way, when they were looking at their supervisors and who they wanted to first go through um, JI, the piece that was still missing, I think Scott, you alluded to it, it's, it's that connection to the employee, that relationship to the employee to be able to really, you're extracting that knowledge uh, from somebody that has been there for 30 years, but if you don't have that good relationship with them, they tend to not give you all the information that you're, you're looking for, right? So it, it could be for lots of different reasons, but um, so again, that was kind of our stumbling block, I would say, is starting with JI, it, we just, we didn't get the reception that I thought we would. And I think a lot of that was due to, uh, uh, the JR piece. We, we needed to work on those relationships a lot more. Good, good. Chris? My uh, suggestion is uh, build um, build the local knowledge, um, you know, or build the knowledge locally. Um, our challenge is uh, we've had uh, um, both local trainees plus our department, uh, our headquarters or corporate department trained. And what's we see happening is that the, the local plants then rely on the corporate folks to do the work for them. And uh, so the faster you get the, the local team up to speed and um, you know, not experts at it, but, but doing the work and building the standard work, then uh, they can internalize it and run with it and not just sit back and rely on the corporate folks to come in and, and solve, or solve all the problems for them. I'll second that one. So I definitely have operational excellence people on my team and we get the request all the time. Hey, can your guys come do uh, create standard work? Can they do the observations? Can they create the jibs? And my question is always, well, why can't you do that? So. Great. No, th this has been, been very, very helpful so far, it, it, you know, for me and I, I know for the audience. Uh, there's there's a tremendous amount of questions that are coming in, which is really really good. So we're generating a lot of a lot of questions, and uh, I know there's there's a few around. Uh, one in particular, the question was who delivers the JI training to the employees, and uh, you know that th th same person went on to say uh, they didn't mean the workshop, but internally once once this is embedded, you know in your organizations, you know who's who's doing that skills training. Uh, that's that's connected to the to the standard work and standardized work. I think we got a couple of minutes left. I think we can get that one in. Sure, we've done some work in that area. Uh, we've we've actually uh, developed a few internal um, trainers to develop the to deliver the JI material, but then our focus is to train the supervisors and uh, the team leads to be able to develop or to be able to deliver the the frontline training to the operators, um, you know, they own the area, they own the, the, the work that needs to get done. And so they train the people to get the work done. So it's all, we've, we've driven that training down to the area. We also have a few, um, I guess, salary trainers, I'll call them, that uh, help with orientation because we do skills training during the orientation process. So we'll have that orientation skill, but the on the job is supervisors and team leads. Definitely, uh, we have uh, so we're relying on our supervisors or the leads in the area to deliver the one-on-one -on -one, um, JI training, and then the other folks, the support folks on our operational excellence team, are there to help those frontline people if they need help creating jibs or practicing or documenting. They're it, they're definitely there to support and not not do for um, is the goal. So great. Well, actually, we just got a couple of minutes left. Any final uh, thoughts or uh, things that you'd like to share with everybody before we run out of time? Other than we we had great feedback from the operators who went through the standardized work um, course. Um, they all enjoyed the the material and then the, the application part because it was a little bit of classroom and then also going out to the floor people definitely enjoyed that aspect of it. So they got, you know, classroom and then, hey, let's go do, so. I'd say keep it simple. Uh, we've, we've had some pushback from uh, some of our plants where we have lean experts and they want to really 
complicate the process and really start getting into the the, the black belt level, uh, even green belt level uh, analysis and uh, and charting and, and graphing. The standard work forms that that uh, TWI brings to the table, it's simple, and it's going to work ninety nine percent of the time. And uh, you know when you hit those really ugly problems, yeah, you can elevate it, but for now, keep it simple when you start. Love it. Thank you very much. We're, it looks like we're at the end of the time here. It's, it's bottom of the hour. I, I sincerely like to thank both uh, Chris and Eric for participating and sharing uh, their experiences. I, I know there was a tremendous amount of questions that we couldn't get to. Uh, what we'd like to do is, is do our level best to, to collect those questions and, and we'll craft a response to, to those questions and put it back out to the, to the folks that have, that have asked those and to the broader audience. So once again, thank you for your time. And thank you, Scott, Chris, and Eric, and to everybody who joined us today. It was a great, great webinar. Thank you so much. Um, just like Scott said, we will send a follow-up on these questions, and I will send the webinar out within 24 to 48 hours. Everyone, have a great day.